Mr. Indie Promoter, I wrote you, but you still ain't answering. I left references, emails, and seminars I attended. I sent two emails back in June. You must have missed them or something. I'm seven feet tall with a look and will work for nothing. Dear Mr. Promoter, you ain't called, wrote, and that's a shoot. Do I suck? Am I the shit? Should I burn my boots? I helped set up the ring in the wet and the cold with no more than a handshake and a hot dog that was old. You said if I helped that I would get a spot. So what's the deal? Can I get booked or not? Mr. I'm too good to book, big man. This will be the last email I ever send your ass. I know you got my last two messages. I saw the read receipt. You ghosted me like you were hiding under a sheet. I hope your Connie conscience eats away at you. You must hate making money. You're bad at what you do. My boots are in flames that's it for me sign seal delivered by bt double b before we get started i want to shout our sponsors here on the bcp as always the bcp is brought to you by our favorite store funkenstein wrestling superstore located online and at the english town flea market in english town new jersey on saturdays and sundays from 8 a.m to 3 p.m in the blue building get your wrestling stuff retro video games gi joes ninja turtles ghostbusters it's our favorite store thank you heather and dan for sponsoring the show Please welcome in our new sponsor, Mania Club. Established in 2015, Mania Club is a WWE-recognized community for fans with an eclectic love for both the world of professional wrestling and raising money for Connor's Cure. During WrestleMania weekend, we host the official tailgate of WrestleMania while also celebrating the life of Connor McCulloch. They're the single largest donor within the V Foundation for Connor's Cure with over 150,000 raised. Please donate and join the Facebook group over at Mania Club. Donate at JimmyV.org slash Mania Club. The BCP is also sponsored by the No Gimmicks Podcast, the pro wrestling podcast that keeps it 100% real, 100% of the time. The No Gimmicks Podcast is available wherever you get your podcast. Shout out, Calvin. Check out the No Gimmicks Podcast. We're also sponsored by our friends over at Global Wrestling Family. GWF is about inclusivity and celebrating a common love for pro wrestling amongst the fans and wrestlers. T-shirts, hats, and more merch is available now. Join the group on Facebook at Global Wrestling Family. And be sure to follow them on Instagram at Global Wrestling Family. Wrestling All Day, All Night is the best wrestling discussion group on Facebook. We provide more of a community feel here and have wrestling fans introduce other fans to something they may have not seen before, such as old school wrestling, indie wrestling, Japanese wrestling, and more. We also strive to be a source for information regarding upcoming wrestler meet and greets and signings. And remember, we're open 24-7, all day, all night. Be sure to follow on socials and join the group on Facebook at Wrestling All Day, All Night. The BCP is also sponsored by Warriors of Wrestling. Warriors of Wrestling proudly presents Intergender Warfare. It's going to be at St. Finbar Catholic Church, 1839 Bath Ave in Brooklyn, New York, Friday, November 10th, featuring Miranda Elize, Taya Valkyrie, Zaya Brookside, Giselle Shaw, Darius Carter, Vicious Vicky, and a whole lot more. Get your tickets now at warriorsofwrestling.com, and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Please welcome in our new sponsors, the Sweet Chin Musings Podcast. Sweet Chin Musings is the creation of the reigning, rarely defending, highly disputed champion of wrestling podcast, Mr. Perfect Mike Mueller and his tag team partner in crime, Luke Kudialis. SCM focuses on the in-ring products of WWE and AEW. No dirt sheet rumors here, as well as backstage news, predictions, and analysis of characters, storylines, and major pay-per-views. Old school fans, don't worry, we have you covered too with a look back on classic matches, top 10 lists, and interactive tournaments that let the fans decide who is truly the best of all time. You can find us on Facebook at Sweet Chin Musings, and be sure to check out the podcast on all your favorite podcast major streaming platforms. Let's chat our new sponsor for the podcast, Our Wireless Del Ran in Del Ran, New Jersey. Expect the best. Our Wireless in Del Ran has all your Verizon wireless needs. Located on Route 130 in the Target Shopping Center in Del Ran, New Jersey. And of course, guys, be sure to ask for our guy, Wayne Keener. Thanks to our new sponsor, John Septic Service. John Septic is your family-owned company for all your septic needs in the northern Baltimore area for over 50 years. Give them a call at 410-272-2317. Guys, remember, a straight flush always beats a full house. Thank you, John Septic. Guys, I want to give a big shout out to our new sponsors on BCP Plus and the podcast. Our friends from the front row, the front row mafia, JVD, Cleary, Randy, and Total with Tom make up this group of the best pro wrestling fans out there supporting everyone across promotions. Join their Facebook group over 
at Front Row Mafia Indie Wrestling Junkies for the latest in their pro wrestling adventures, custom art, wrestler highlights, interactions, fan discussion, and more. On a personal note, I want to thank the boys for their friendship and always supporting myself, Vicious in the Town. Thank you, fam. The Front Row Mafia. We also got to shout out our new sponsors, the United States Department of Nerds, the USDN Podcast, a podcast presented by Dat Feeling Podcast Network, LLC. The USDN Podcast is run by Jeffrey T. Fountain, a BCP Plus contributor, Jennifer Johnson, Eric Johnson, and Tay Stith, and is also home to the Queens of Nerdum Podcast. USDN Podcast is a safe place for all nerds where they can come to be entertained, learn, and embrace debate. USDN prides itself on being by the people, for the people, and of the people. Here at the USDN, we strive to bring you the best content we can find where you know it comes with the USDN seal of approval. We always strive to give you factual data, and if it's a rumor, we'll always preface it with the rumor alert before dropping the freshest info. However, once those rumors are proven true, you can bet your money we at USDN are slamming the stamp down and giving it the USDN seal of approval. Hit our links on social media for all our merch. This ad is USDN approved. Yo, listen. Platinum on the mic and I'm coming for your ass. I'm listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. And I think it's the hottest show in the game, cause them and everybody loves the acclaim. Now scissor me. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a very well big episode of the okay. BCP, right? ladies and gentlemen. This one is long overdue. Someone I've been wanting to have on the show for a while now, but it is the right time because he's putting out stellar content with the meat pop express he's putting out a stellar content on his social media uh he is an invictus uh former social media champion we'll talk about that in a little bit as well please welcome to the show long overdue it's time for some big trouble big trouble ben, ben bishop, bishop. What's up, do you know bro? the whole moniker you, do you know the whole moniker i ask every podcast host do they know the mind do you know Earth, the whole earthquake in yeah, six you got foot yeah, yeah, 12 boy. inch which begs Fair. the question, why six foot twelve? Six foot uh, twelve, because you never met anybody six foot twelve. You met a bride, probably you've seen a few seven footers, but you never saw anyone six foot twelve. Goes against and let me the cliche. And let me tell you, happened. let Please. me tell you the, let me tell you what behind it. So I got it because I was thinking, like, how do I want to be different? Right. You know, obviously I'm tall. I got I want to say so I'm like, yeah, I could say seven foot, but everybody's in like you know, and I, I still will say it, but you know, six foot twelve, I was gonna remember that. I remember when because I'm a big Celtics fan. So when Kevin Ooh, Garnett okay. came, when Kevin Garnett came to the Celtics, I remember hearing a story when he first got drafted, and he didn't want to be a center, so he would tell everyone, "I'm six thirteen," and it just stuck with me because I'm like, "That's so funny," because he didn't want to be just thought of as like I'm a back to the basket post player. I'm I, and he's a he's a shoot seven one, so he's like, "No, I don't want to be. I want to make sure everyone knows I'm I'm six thirteen. I'm not seven foot." So that's where I got that's where I got it from six foot twelve. 15% of a metric ton. Now that's just me being an asshole. So I just to make people do some math. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it, man. And that's good stuff, man. Garnett. Uh, I, I dude, I'm not a Celtics guy. Cause you guys uh, killed, <laughs> killed our nets so many times, man. VC, Vince Carter, Jason Kidd. That was my era. Ooh, my favorite player. Kenyon Vince Martin, Ray, uh, Chris, yeah, uh, Doug Chris. Uh, yeah. Oh, not Doug Christie. Uh, George Christich. Jefferson. Je yep, Jefferson. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You know the Great deal. Teams. Great and teams. then we ended up getting all your guys, and they played <laughs> hard. I'll give them that. It just, you know, it was kind of old. the tail end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was <laughs> yeah a tough, that was a tough trade. Because I was, I was dancing owner. around it. Yeah. <laughs> and that new owner showed up and was like, I got to put some butts in seats. Let me get all the big stars. And you traded away the future for a few years. <laughs> Yeah, and then we did it again and again and again. Durant again. And again. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, man. I could talk sports all day. Are you a Boston guy? I'm a boy. Yeah, so I'm from Rhode Island originally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm all Boston sports. Patriots, Patriots. Celtics. Well, Red thanks Sox. for coming on. We appreciate a few minutes. <laughs> uh, no, Giants, man. But again, it's like those. I love to hate rivalries, man. Of like, course. You know, like I I I almost miss Tom Brady in a way, man, because he was always like the villain of the story, man. Much. Oh, like you got wrestling. nothing. You got nothing to hate. Yeah, yeah. You, you should be a you should be a Patriots fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get what I get what you're saying, bro. Um, but dude, we we could talk sports all day, man. Uh, but I wanted to have you here for many reasons. But the big thing that's been sticking out, man, is the reels on Instagram, yeah. the social media posts. You really kind of almost I don't want to use the word attack. I, I think it's you know it's comedy. It's very tastefully done, but. You go right for the throw, man. I'm not going to lie. When it comes to uh, indie cliches, um, people who have been on dark, um, the, <laughs> the Eminem video, the stand, brilliant, um, the lyrics, the inflections as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
what made you kind of decide, you know, because sometimes these big men, you know, you get thrown into these cliches and stuff. What made you decide to, hey, like, I'm going to show all my personality and my talent here and uh, I'm going to go right for the throat. Yeah. You know, it's and it's a good way to say because you, you could you could say attacked, right? You could say it kind of, you know, you go I'm just kind of going for it. And I've realized, you know, in professional wrestling, especially on the indie scene, you kind of have to just go for it. Yeah. Like, they, like you can't just sit back. I've watched guys like Matt Cardona. Right. Come go out there and just make a name for himself. When everyone thought like, you know, Zack Ryder's dead and buried, you know, and, and but now all of a sudden out of the ashes comes Matt Cardona. Right. So and he and he played on like a character of like, I'm better than all of this, all this indie stuff. And he's and he's made a killing on the indies oh, yeah. just by doing that. So I'm thinking like, why can't I do something a little a little bit different? Like, you know, a lot of people like to put big men in a box Like you say, you know, they like to think just like, oh, you're big. So you're just going to be big and brooding and I'm going to I'm a killer and all this, that and the other. And like, that's good and well for if somebody wants to do that. That's just not me. It's never been my personality. I've never been that. Like, I'm not going to walk around like a taker or a cane, even though I'm the same size, actually taller than cane. But Ooh. yes, I am. There's a picture out there. You can see, d- dive deep. You can find it from 2020, uh, 2000. Yeah, 2020, 2020. Um, so, so I, I, but I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. Like I've, I've always loved Kevin Nash. He's been my favorite forever, you know. And he was a little bit more against the grain of big guys because he had a personality, right? And he had a look to him, and he had that, like, he had that charisma. So I was just thinking, like, what can I do? What can I do different? And you know, once me and Nick started the podcast, Nicky the Good on Twitter, um, you know, once we started the podcast, it was like, you know what? I can't. I don't want to just have a pod. I don't want to just do the podcast. I want to do something else. I want to put like content out. And that's what Nick was saying. You know, he's coming from Barstool. And he said, you know, at Barstool, they would say like a lot of their content people, you had to put at least two to three things a day on each social media platform, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. You had to get content out there. And that was kind of the norm, two to three things a day for these guys. So he was like, if we're at least putting one thing out a day, it's going to it it's going to continue to help us with the algorithm. So then I was like, you know, what can I, what can I do? Like, I'm like, I'm not going to recycle, you know, clips of wrestling, which sometimes honestly do pretty well, but like, I didn't want to just be like recycling wrestling clips because everybody's got wrestling clips. Right. So I'm just thinking, dude, wrestling is so silly. It's so comical, like, especially indie wrestling. And I just think like how I explain (laughs) it to people and they ask me, and you saw the one where I was, you know, the, Oh, WWE, like, you know, that one is like, that, that's that's every that's all the time and we all get, and everyone resonates with it we all get it and i always say in wrestling if you can't laugh at yourself if you can't just like if you take yourself too serious you, you're gonna you're gonna wash out you're just not gonna you're not gonna be able to you, you won't be able to last because at the end of the day it's it's professional wrestling and we know what it is and i'm not gonna say the f word you know but it's fun we want to have fun I'll say that F word. That's the F word I'm going to say. We want to have fun. And you know what? We can laugh at it. We can laugh at it. So I just thought like, you know what? Let's make fun of some of these cliches. Let's make, let, let's just poke fun at it because, you know, we're all like, like the cowboy one I did, the 11 second video where I was like every, every indie, every indie wrestler with a cowboy gimmick. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. don't use a laugh. And even guys like, like Manders, one called Manders saw any laughed. Right. You know, he's like, you know, this is funny. Right. And I'm like, hey, dude, I got a big man one you can go look at as well, where I'm shitting on myself, talking about I ain't going to sell or take a bump tonight. Right. So, like, I, I get it. Like, th- we, we can all laugh at each other. We can all laugh at each other. And there's no reason to just be to be like, yes, take the craft serious. Don't get me wrong there. Take it serious. Work hard. Make the towns, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you can't laugh at yourself and you can't have fun with it, what, what's even the point? So I just decided, hey, let's go for it. Let, you know, and people are seeing it, you know, and people are getting it. And they're and they're I've gotten a ton, I have a ton of like DMs from fellow wrestlers, you know, guys on TV that have just said, like, dude, this is so great. Like, this is funny. Like, we're getting it. The dark one blew up. And you know, because I that it, was my <laughs> the Eminem one might be my favorite, actually, but that was very good. That was the most creative one. But I think the dark one is because we all have been around someone like that in wrestling like (laughs) as soon as dark started and people started getting the getting the aw logo under their names on the posters and like this is when this like mindset and i and i said it straight up like this when this clown behavior would start getting on dark is amazing and i'm not discrediting anyone obviously i did it i did it twice it's an awesome accomplishment but take it for what it is doesn't mean you're better than anyone 
anyone, I don't care who, I don't care where you go, does not mean you're better than anybody that you were on dark. So I, I, and, I, and but we've all seen people like that. So I was like, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun with this because I've seen it too much. And that's kind of when it started taking off. Then I just started thinking I, I, every day I get, a, I get an idea. I throw it down on my phone. I throw it down. I got a ton of things. I got like 10 or 15 more things that I have ideas of. And I'm trying to keep it fresh every day. Like today, when I just did the, um, the one today about the, uh, the TV execs acting like wrestling fans, talking about demos and shit. I don't okay. know if you saw that one yet. That one, that one just, I did no. that today. I like did it, but I had to like I was like changing changing shirts because I was three different people, so I had to keep doing that. So, it, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but I do a lot of it off the top of my head. I don't write, I don't really write anything down besides the stand the five sides the lyrics for the stand video. So I just do it off good. the top of my head because it's 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 just and I'm I'm enjoying it. And Nick even said that to me. He reached out to me this week. He's like, it just seems like you're having fun with this, and you found a lane. That's the other thing. You got to find a lane on social media. If you don't have a lane, you're just doing random stuff. Like it's going to people are going to be like, okay, you're entertaining, but like, I don't know if I really want, I don't, I don't get like your, what's your theme here, right? Yeah, everyone's yeah. kind of kinda got their, like their thing. So I'm like, you know, no one's really doing this. I know there's the guy, uh, veteran Jack Vaughn who does, he does a very good job. I, okay. He's I know who very, you're talking about. Like he's very ring. funny. He, but he does yeah. more. Yeah. He does more in ring stuff, right? He doesn't do, he, he does a little bit of what I've done too. Um, and he's great at it. And I'll say like, you know, I thought about him too, when he, when he started, uh, doing those videos of the in-ring stuff, the indie, the thigh slap thing, genius stuff. Cause it, that's taken off and he's done very, very well with it, you know, but I was thinking more like the backstage, that type is to pull the curtain back a tiny bit, you know, and so, and it it's resonated. So that's my long winded answer to a short question. So. No, man. <laughs> and, and, no. And I appreciate it, man. And you're such a good talker too. And you're killing it, man. I love those videos, man. And it seems like it's been very well received, like for people like me, because, you know, we do work backstage. We know the yeah. cliches, we know the conversations. I think it's kind of, I've always appreciated the non cliches, the against the grain stuff, man. And that's what drew me to you, man. And I think it's brilliant. Um, You mentioned Matt Cardona though. I want to yeah. talk about that because you guys seem to have a very good rapport over at Meat Pop <laughs> Express with Cardona. I think you guys popped him a, a few times. Um, oh, we did. I think uh, maybe Big Ben Bishop versus uh, Matt Cardona one day. I think this versus or or never versus. He said he wanted to start an indie faction. And who better than me by his side? He needs a, he needs a diesel to his Shawn Michaels. OK, All right. I that's what I that that's my idea. That's my idea. Okay. He wants to start an indie faction. He can pick me right now out of the somewhat obscurity that I'm in. And I'll tell you, I can add I can add so much to his act on the indies. I'll call it an act. I can add so much to it as the big heavy, but not just a big brooding heavy that can't speak. and looks like a mongoloid. I can add. I got the look. I can talk. I can add the charisma. I can add to him and Steph Delander. I can do that. And also I can drive the car. You know, I, I asked him, I said, I'll drive you. I'll drive you around. He has to sit in the back. He said, I had to sit in the back, but I'll drive him around. I get it. He's the vet. I get it. I get it. I'll be respectful, be respectful. But even versus Matt Cardona, I think we put on a hell of a match. You saw, I don't know if you saw the video, but he had to stand on a chair to come even close to my height. And he's a big guy. He's a big guy, but I, I was out angling him at Starcast. Let me tell you. Um, but no, he <laughs> is. We did pop him, and Nick right now is doing a tremendous job helping him out, actually a little bit with his social media, um, doing some stuff for him. And so hopefully we'll have him on board the Meat Pop Express soon. We'll see. We'll see. And maybe maybe sometime soon. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anybody that's been as successful on the indies than Matt Cardona has. I think yeah. he, oh, yeah. especially some, especially part as the released wrestlers over the past five years, there is no one that comes close to him He because he gets it. He gets the indies. He gets how to work the indies. He gets merch. He's a he's a natural marketer, natural salesman, and it's it's worked wonders for him. The guy is absolutely killing it, and and he does it his way, man. And I love that you said that. Um, we always do our um male and you know female independent wrestler of the year uh, awards. And Cardona, you know, we never give it to him because I always want to highlight those, you know, who haven't been to yeah, the grandest yeah, stage and all that. Wrestlers, yeah. Right, right, exactly. And no disrespect to him because he would win it. Um, Darius Carter, two years running. I'll just the put man. it that way, man. Um, he's my but, fav he's my favorite independent wrestler. Are you serious? By far, by far. I no I I don't go out of the and you know I'm not even I'm not trying to be like a dick here, but I Please. don't come out of the locker room to watch matches pretty much ever, ever. Like, I, you know, I'm either preparing for my match or I'm just hanging out. And, I, you know, I, and also I, I've been taught kind of you don't want to just like you don't want to sit with the fans all the right. time. Right. You, you know, you, you, you kind of it's then you kind of look like you're just one of them. Right. Um, but 
I remember one of the only times I've done it. I literally came out of the locker room and it was Darius Carter versus Alex Kane. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to watch this match. I don't give a shit. Like, and I, cause, and cause I'm just a big fan. And Alex is great. Alex is great. Don't get me yes, wrong. Yes. But I was coming out. I wanted to see Darius because I never really, I've seen a few of his matches. What got me over with him was his just overall like aura, you know? He comes out, he's got the music, you know, when they got, they got the, uh, the good lights from, the, from our boys over at GPW, when they're working the show, they can do the lights for him real nice. Um, and, he, you know, he's got the jacket and this whole, like, swag that he's, it's just, he is a hell of a heel. And that's hard to do on the indies. It really is. It really is. It's hard to be, it's hard to exude that healness. And he's just obviously an amazing wrestler, but I'm all about the character. The guy's got an amazing character. He's an amazing wrestler. Yes, he is my favorite indie wrestler. That, that's crazy, man. Uh, very <laughs> old school heel. Yes. Uh, I feel he elevates everybody. Uh, there's mm-hmm. certain people I've been pushing like, oh, I got to have a match with Darius, this and that, because yeah. I feel like he elevates everyone. Big Ben Bishop versus Darius. Uh, uh, you know, man. you know, I try. We, we were talking when um, we'll get into Invictus a bit. But um, unfortunately, you know, once we when I wanted when we were I was gonna have a match up at the Bronx Brewery on in March. Yes. You know, they were they were saying, like, you know, who do you want to who's who's a guy you want to face? And first one I said was Darius. Fortunately, he was in a program with Edith Surreal and t- totally fine. Edith's great as well. Good series um, of matches, too. Yeah. yeah. Good series of matches. They did. They did great. You know, but I was bummed because that's that's the, <laughs> that's the match. That's the that's the that's the match I wanted. Again, I got to wrestle Carly. Amazing. It was great to wrestle Carly as well. Carly Bravo. Um, and that was awesome. But I did. You know, the first thing that did come to mind was Darius. So not 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 an official, you know, it's more of a wish list, you know, not an official call out here. You know, I'm not going to put you into wrestling mode right there, <laughs> but let you know, for the promoters watching Big Trouble, Ben Bishop, I, I'm, I don't want to speak for you. I feel like you want a piece of Darius Carter. I, oh, hell yeah. I definitely want a piece of Darius Carter. And he could do all of his little fancy stuff and his scientific world of sports stuff. But you know what? <laughs> it all goes by the wayside when a size 16 boot just goes right to the mush of his face. You know, and I get the big body slam and I'll get the people going and drop the big leg. I don't care any about the scientific stuff at that point. You can give me all your world of sport. Don't matter. Don't matter when I get the people going. That's Fair like, enough. The leg Fair. drops. I- I've seen you in action. And speaking of which, correct me if I'm wrong, a uh, good buddy of the show, one of our favorite guys over in Impact, Steve Macklin. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I saw a couple clips on there. Uh, you choke slam that man and. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you got the one, two, three over the, the uh, former Impact Heavyweight uh, or Impact Champion. I did, I did, and you know wow. what? Steve is, uh, yeah, Congrats. St- Steve is a, a great guy, great guy yes. to work with, and um, as you know, St- he's an awesome person. Um, Steve and I actually we we built a rapport um, back in the GSW days when GSW was running a little bit. You know, yep, a um, sure. few shows that they ran, and we were supposed to be in a stable. You know, until you know, things went by the wayside. Um, but you know, once I found out I was wrestling Steve, very excited, obviously former impact impact champion. I think he, he, Josh Alexander beat him, right? Who's the current champ? Uh, it was, yeah, it was, you know what? It was supposed to be them, but I think it was Alex was it Shelley. Shelley. Or maybe it was Alex Shelley. And now That's Josh, right. Yeah, it was, that okay. was like, they were supposed to finally have them. I think they did, yeah, but it yeah. wasn't for the title. It yeah. was planned. Okay. It was yeah. Shelley. It was Shelley. So Alex Shelley, but you know, not far removed. I think it was this one before Shelley. Um, and you know, it was in Burlington. So I, so for people that don't know, I played college basketball uh, for the University of Vermont, um, Burlington, Vermont. People, a lot of people think I'm from Vermont. I am not. Uh, but Burlington, Vermont um, is basically like my second hometown. I love it there. I had and quite coincidentally, it was alumni weekend for men's basketball. So I had about 20 teammates there, you know, former teammates, guys on the team before me, guys on the team after me all going nuts, joining people in Burlington. You know, I'm like a pseudo celebrity there. I'll call myself that because they're they they pop love, for you, bro. There's nothing. There's nothing up there besides basketball and hockey. So UVM basketball, UVM hockey are like the the thing up there. So it was a great place to play. I love Burlington, Vermont. And, you know, me and Steve had the match and, you know, I got, I, I got the win, a little bit of Catamount magic, University of Vermont Catamounts. Um, but, you know, to put Steve over one hell of a professional also to work with chop the absolute shit out of me. My <laughs> God. Got to make you work I'm, for it, brother. Like, brother, it ain't TV, brother. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Fair no, but, but um, it was it was great. That was a hell of a night. Like I said, coaches, uh, colleagues, you know, fans that were of, of Vermont basketball were all there. Um, and yeah, we had a fun time. We had a really fun match. 
I, and I don't want to pull back the curtain too much, man, <laughs> but I, I'll put it this way. I'm choosing my words carefully. It's not often that you see a, a t- television person take the L. And yes, obviously yes. you guys mentioned the report. We know how we could go on and on about how great Steve is. Yeah. Um, I think that that is awesome. I'll put it this way. What did that mean to you? No, you know, the fact when I when I heard um, and we'll pull we'll pull it back when I heard the idea for the business for the match, we'll call it when I heard the business for right, the match right. um, and I, I could tell the I could tell the booker um, was a little, you know, like uh, he's like, I got to put you i gotta put you over you know i'm like because it's a you know it's kind of your town um good and problem soon, to have. and as soon yeah. as steve got there and he heard and he's like yeah all right like it, yeah, there was yeah. no you know there was no there was no My like because he gets it he yeah. gets it you know at the end of the day like what did i say before when you start taking yourself too serious that's what and i get you want to protect yourself when you're on tv you do you do but he you know i'm not trying to put myself over too much but he takes a look at me and he's like if I take a if I take an L to you, is that a is that the end of the world? I mean, look, you're you're a, a legit, you're seven, damn near seven feet tall. He's like, and you're a big guy. Like it's doesn't look bad, you know. So no. he's like, so he's like, you know what? Yeah, let's have some fun out there. He was he couldn't have been cooler. Could not have been cooler about it. There was no like, yeah, well, it's like trying. Let's do like a screwy finish or like something like that. There was nothing of that, you know. And I and I've and I've you know I've had that before. I'll say it. I had yeah, that. Yes, but. Yeah. but but he 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 was he was gracious. He was cool. Um, and yeah, I, I I think the world of Steve Macklin. I think that he sh- should be at the top of the card. He got a is it impact still is so. Um, and what a great what a great wrestling couple they are. Even Deanna Deanna, the sweetheart. She's she's great too. Oh. So yeah, we'll put her over real quick as well. Two of the <laughs> nicest in the whole <laughs> yeah, business. Absolutely, and, hands down, man. Uh, and that's that's awesome. You deserve it, man. Um, you know, you re- really deserve that opportunity. He is by far one of the nicest men, and and that I, I love it. She's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Because that, like, that was that was that was it. There was the, it was like okay. it was it was yeah. He didn't he didn't pitch yeah. a fit about it. He didn't like you know like you know pit the like the job or boo boo face type of thing where people will do. You know, he went out. He was he was giving it to like I, my teammates. You know, flicking them off. He went in the crowd. He's like, yeah, you know, we 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 fought into the crowd right near them. He loved it. He he was eating it up. He couldn't believe it. He's like, this is great. <laughs> this is an awesome atmosphere and and you that and that's awesome man very well deserved the the moment itself felt right um and i don't want to be like mr fantasy booker over here we're not big on that on the show man but i always like to ask man uh we talked about cardone a little bit you had that match with macklin we're seeing a lot of these aw talents come here through the northeast which is very cool we're seeing a lot of these hall of famers dreamers working a lot a lot of these places here in the northeast man is there anyone um that feasibly that you want to face right now that are making the indie circuit Oh man, that's a that's a good question. And you know, you know, Rob, I haven't really ever, I haven't been one to ever really make lists, right? Yeah. And there, and I have nothing against people that do. Um, I just I want to wrestle as many people as possible, as long as they're not the shit. Right. right. <laughs> I want to, you know, I I want to. I'll. And that's the thing, you know, it's it's a boring answer, but I I've never really thought about like having a have making making any type of list. I got a. I'm actually very excited. A few matches I got coming up. I'm going to be uh, wrestling as Ruckus, Independent Wrestling Hall of Famer. I've wrestled before, but it's always been in tag matches. So I got a match coming up against him. Awesome. In, in a few weeks. Um, also a match against um, Card Subject to Change. And I'm not sure, but I think Jarrett Diaz as well in Chicago coming up. Very sure. excited to wrestle him as well. Um, so there's just, a, there's, I haven't, you know, once I, if I, Think you know if I if I know who the person is and you know I've heard and they're making a name for I'd I'd love to wrestle I'd like to wrestle I really would like to wrestle everybody. that's such a baby face shitty answer but I no, like, man you know I Keep I it just, real I, I want I want to work with different people I don't want to just do the same matches and you know I love my matches with Wrecking Ball we've had some awesome matches and I've had and, I, and he's one of my he's one of my good buddies in wrestling one of my best buddies in wrestling old Spence but Wrecking Ball is the best uh, but you know I wrestle them so I want to wrestle new people I want to continue to continue to build off of one of us like. Guys like Ron Bass Jr., good dude, but I think we'd put on a hell of a match. Two big guys, another Hoss fight, you know. Guys like him, like I want to. I don't. I don't need to wrestle even just the guys on TV, but I wrestle some guys that are like up and coming, hungry guys that want to put on a good want to put on a good match. Because sometimes if you get TV guys and you're working against them, sometimes they want to take the night off. And hey, you know what? You did what you needed to do. You've done your thing. I can't. I can't blame you. But so that's why, like the up and coming, hungry indie guys. That's kind of the guys I really want to work with. 
Love it. Book him versus Darius. That's, that's it. That he is number one. I'd Book say him oh, no, he's Darius. number one. Love it. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh Meat Pop Express, man. Yes, um sir. I, I got to see you guys at, over at StarCast in Chicago. It was so cool. Though. We took some pictures together, man. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, again, like you guys go against the grain, you know, even at the media scrums or you're doing the interviews, <laughs> you seem to <laughs> pop the talent, which I appreciate. Um, You know, we would see Brandon do that on, on his show, man, yeah. which I, I really do miss because uh, yes. I, I wouldn't miss an episode. Obviously, you were a big part of that. Um, it was awesome to see you guys work together in, in the ring as well. Um, mm -hmm. I just love that stuff for me. Who's so used to the cliches or backstage interviewers or whatever it is. Um, I'm pretty much like the straight man and everything. And the wrestlers <laughs> have at me, uh, which is super fun, but I just love what you guys do, man. Can you tell us about uh, you and Nikki, the good, um, you know, kind of coming from that, that barstool history doing what you guys are doing now with me pop express. Cause I, I love it. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. You know, so we had, you know, we had wrestling um, and you know, we realized like, you know, wrestling's barstool IP, right? So we couldn't, we, we, we realized like, Hey, you know what? We, we probably want to do, do our own thing here because you know, we're, I'm not a barstool employee right. uh, and you know, Nikki was, Nikki was in production. So I was, was like, you know, we decided like, let's do our own thing. We threw some things around and you know, I already had the meat pop express idea, which I got from big trouble in little China. He drives the pork chop express folks. If you want to know what meat pop express is from, I was he wondering, dri he drives the pork chop express in the movie. My, a lot of my character is loosely based off of Jack Burton and big trouble in little China. So when he drives the pork chop express and a teammate in college of mine used to always, when he would refer to guys we'd play against that are like big and brawl, like he'd always call them meat pops. So that always stuck with me. So I was like, pork chop express, meat pop express. Got to go with it. So that there, there you go. There's the history behind the name. Um, but yeah, so we're like, you know what? Why don't we just call it that? You know, I already had it. I already had, I had it in my theme song. I have the moniker. I have the shirts. Let's go with it. And we realized like, because if I'm walking around a guy my size, you know, and I'm walking around and I'm being too much of the straight man. It's going to it's going to look it's going to look a little weird, right? Remember all through the years when when interviewers would talk to wrestlers like wrestlers we have to stand on boxes or you know they, the interview cannot look bigger than the wrestlers. So how could I almost be the straight man talking to these guys and gals, and, you know, and be towering towering over them. So I'm so and so me and Nikki were talking like what's a way we can be different too? And we just thought, like, let's let's have fun with this. Let's be a parody of wrestling journalism, not shitting on it by any means, yeah. but having fun, having fun with it and asking it, like you said, against the grain type questions like Brandon would do, you know, and, and Brandon, you know, at, is one of the best at it at just going off the cuff. And, just and he would of, pop some people. Too, yeah. He would. He would. <laughs> so we so we're just like, let's go and let's go and have some fun. And I'll act like, you know, the dentist stamp of like, oh, you, you got to book me. You got to book me. You know, they playing playing that card and like trying to politic and make fun of that type of part, that part of wrestling um, and play off them. Like we didn't have much scripted. Like we'd, we'd see someone and be like, all right, you got an idea. And Nick would be like, yeah, I got it. I'll, I'll take care of this one. Or I'd say, I got an idea. I'll, I'll go. I'll go talk with this. But like like we had a three minute convo with Effie. And we didn't we didn't know what to say. We didn't know F, what Effie was going to say. You know, as you know, everyone knows Effie. He can go off the rails. Janelle had no idea what Janelle was going to say. Oh and yeah, just, with his new with yeah. his with the Florida man stuff, and yeah. he, he and he just went off the cuff. But we just and we just played with it. And I realized like I've never done anything like that, Rob. Like I've never done a like a, any type of like interviewing. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like I'm, I feel like I kind of got a little bit of a knack for just doing like the yeah. off the cuff type stuff and having fun. And um, I think they got that. A lot of guys got that Im immediately. That was our biggest worry, too. Like, are guys going to get this? Like, are the guys and gals going to understand what we're trying to do here? And they, most of them did. I I'd say at least 90% 90, 90 of them did. You know, Cardona, Colt Cabana, Lash LaRue, uh, Janela, Effie, all these guys, they got it. They, they kind of got the infantry. They all, they all had, they all got what we were, what we were trying to do and they played off of played off us as well so that was the thing you know we wanted to be different we wanted to be di we know like hey we're only going to get noticed if we're different because there's already a ton of people doing a hell of a job and we're we're not we're not we don't want to just be you know another face in the crowd we want to we want to be above the crowd i'm already above the crowd so <laughs> but i want to be metaphorically above the above the crowd as well so um yeah we just decided let's let's go for it let's be parodies of wrestling journalism uh, and have some fun. And, you know, that's what we've been doing. We're just having fun with the content, with the podcast, um, with StarCast. It's just been it's just been an absolute blast. 
Yeah, man. And, and as a, I, I like to consider myself a journalist, but um, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And I think more so the workers and the talent appreciate it. It's something different. You know, I, I've, uh, I've been to a couple of the media scrums um, and <laughs> I, I, I'll give, I'll give like the Tony cons and, and the people that go up there, I'll give them credit. Sometimes it's like a firing squad. Like, yeah, you go, Oh, what are the numbers? And what is this? And why is this? And da, da, da. Um, and one of the first things I did, I, I said, thank you for AW Dark and thank you for giving the indie talent a uh, platform. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't get enough, uh, as much as we joke about it, uh, I feel yeah. like he doesn't get enough credit for that, man. And anyone who goes up there and takes a question. So I think um, even at the Premier Streaming Network, uh, Nikki yeah. kind of popped Cardona with his questions. I think you need that. I think it's something different. Um, and it's against the grain. And I, I applaud you guys. For yeah. It's Thank you, man. No, and, yeah. and we appreciate hearing from a guy like you've been doing this for a while now, you know, and an esteemed wrestling journalist. Uh, I, I, just, know, I, I, I ride Vicky's <laughs> coattails, man. Oh, uh, come on. I just come carry on. her bags, brother. <laughs> um, I, I want to ask you this, man. I saw I was, you know, doing my research, looking at some of the social media. And I think you got a couple doggies over there. We love oh, doggies. Man. Oh, if you know, we can I, get a puppy cameo. Are, let me see. I mean, don't go, don't go crazy, but Phoebe, if, Kelsey. We're not against, oh, really? Is this going to happen? So uh, we they're, just, probably with Ma, they're probably with mama right now. I do that. They're camera shy. You know, I tried to get them on, on zooms at work and stuff. And uh, they, uh, yeah, they're pretty camera shy. I know they're the best. I know, I know we, we connected about it at Starcast, but um, we're big, we're big dog people. I'd have, Love I'd it. have, I'd have 10. If I could dude, I'd that's it. If I could, but I don't have, I don't have the yard for it you know, or the time or the, you know, the finances to do things. They are, they, they're a lot, but they, they, there's nothing. I, oh, my, my wife just texted me. You woke, you woke Stevie up. Right? That's a blame me. Tell her drops. Now I'm in the doghouse and she didn't, uh, <laughs> she didn't leave her. Okay. Um, no, it, uh, dogs, I, we don't deserve them. And I know that's the old yeah. cliche people say, um, there's nothing better than coming home, coming home to a dog. You know, I love, I love my wife. Danny, I love you. <laughs> um, but there's nothing better than coming home, coming home to a dog. <laughs> That's <laughs> it, man. And, and even this guy, champ, he's, he's six months now. Um, oh man, yeah, he's he's usually at the top of the steps when I'm doing this, he's at the top of the steps waiting for me. Just... And you know, good for you getting a puppy yeah. because we said, like, you know what, we got to when we, we, re we rescued two, both of them, Stevie and Kelsey are both rescues, yeah. and we, we were like, you know, but we can't do a puppy. And we had they, we you're they, smarter, they, you're they, smarter than when us. they told us, I think they were both around 18 months when we got each of them. So, um, so yeah, we've had Kelsey for almost a year now and Stevie since July, uh, end of July. And yeah, they are, they are the absolute best. They just, oh, yeah. nothing better than dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. We, we, and he's actually, he is a rescue too. That's great. Uh, they fit, and, and guys, if you can, you know, we're very pro dog here. Uh, if you can, you know, if you know, you guys are in a position where you want to add another member yes. of the family, like, Please, you know, we're at rescue some poor soul, man. Think, um, think about yeah. th Yes, please. Everyone think about rescues. Like I know like nothing again, nothing against breeders. I'm not trying to say it, but there are so many dogs. There are so many that just need, need, want a home and they will believe me. If you give them a home, they know they know they they will be the undenying loyalty to you because they they dealt with the shelter. They know what it's like. Dogs get it. Believe me, dogs get it. And like the, as soon as we talked, took Stevie home, um, not to get too sentimental, but she Please. was on the streets for a while. She lived on the streets. She was abandoned by a family um, and they found her in rough shape, you know, brought her, brought her back to health in a few months and put her up for adoption. And you can just tell, you can tell with, with dogs that they, they know what you've done for them and they're yes. going to give you, they're going to give you a lifelong, lifelong loyalty. So they, it's, so everybody, you know, whoever's listening, if you're thinking about getting a dog, Please think about rescuing. Come oh, here, come, here comes Stevie. Oh, they hurt. She come heard here. you, man. Come, come on. Here. Come here. Like, what? that couldn't oh. be more perfect timing. Oh, puppy cameo. <laughs> so would you say Stevie? Yeah, Who's this? Yeah, oh, you Kelsey. got both. Yeah. Stevie is a little one and Kelsey mm. is a bigger one. Oh, boy. I'm sorry I woke <laughs> them up, but totally worth it, man. Totally worth it. Oh, there they are. Oh, they're, they're, they're the best, best of friends, too. Love it, man. Um, bro, I want to be respectful of your time, but I got to ask you this one before, yeah, yeah, yeah. before we get out of here, man. Um, as a wrestler, say you do get that WrestleMania entrance, man. You're doing big things right now. Continue killing it. Continue going against the grain, man. I love the content. But Thank say you, you do get that big WrestleMania or pay-per-view <laughs> entrance. What band or artist plays you down to the ring? Oh, God, you put me on the spot here. Maybe something uh, you work out. Oh, to. you know Maybe what? You know what? Yeah. It has to be. It has to be Creed. 
It has to be Creed. I was a big fan of Creed. I was a big fan of Creed way before now. It's like everybody like loves Creed. I was I was rocking Creed in high school. I was bumping Creed. But I'm like, no, oh, Creed sucks. I'm like, no, they yeah, don't why, suck. why do they get so much hate? Like, no, like they Creed. don't. Man, but we all remember the My Sacrifice video. <laughs> we all go. remember that. We remember. I remember like you know, most of the music I started listening to was because of wrestling. You know, I listened to the pay per view theme songs. You know, the Disturbs, the Creed, oh, I loved it. Um, Trust the Company, Parks, all all those, all those. So um, that's how I learned a lot of music. But, you know, I just fe I fell in love with Creed, uh, both albums, you know, Human Clay, Weathered, um, two great albums, such so many bangers on both. So uh, Creed, it would have to be Creed, it have to be Creed. We'll figure out a song. I I'd have to think more about that one. But maybe yeah. like when they played at halftime, halftime Thanksgiving, when the guy came down on the angel wings, you know, that circulates every Thanksgiving at the Cowboys game. <laughs> uh, maybe that, maybe that, maybe I'll come down on angel wings. <laughs> I'm here for it, guys. Book it. Somebody book it. Um, Ben, I, I, I want to say Mr. Bishop, Ben, dude, thank you so much for, for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to get to know you a little bit better, man. But before we get out of here, we're all about that shameless, shameless self-promotion. Oh, here on the get BCB. your shit in. Dude, yeah, you know it. <laughs> get your stuff in, brother. Tell everyone where they can follow you. Get the merch, all that good stuff, man. All right. At Big Trouble BB on TikTok, which I, I can't stand it. Uh, TikTok, Instagram. Twitter. Also, follow the Meat Pop Express new episode every single Friday. We're dropping on audio, Spotify, Apple, 6 a.m. We drop on YouTube between 10 or 11. Just depends on, depends on when Nick's able to get it get it up there. Um, and then, you know, where you can find you can find the merch. DM me. You know, I don't I don't do the I don't do the pro wrestling tees gimmick. Um, I got a form. We got some new Meat Pop Express merch out. So follow us there. It's a pinned tweet on our Twitter. Check out the merch. Awesome 6040 beautiful cotton poly blend shirt. We're not doing the heavy cotton. I, if I wouldn't, if I'm not going to wear it, I wouldn't expect anyone else to wear it. So I'm not doing the cheap shit. Um, and then, Love of it. course, to put over the wrestling, October 20th, Hagerstown, Maryland, ACW, me versus Ruckus and Robbie Illuminati in a handicap match. WCPW, Sycamore, Illinois, the next night, making the goddamn towns. Next night, Sycamore, Illinois, WCPW. I am the heavyweight champion at Windy City Professional Wrestling. No big deal. The gold's hanging over this six foot 12 shoulder. Um, and so, yeah, come out if you're in the area. Um, both awesome shows, Hagerstown, Maryland, Sycamore, Illinois. Um, and that's for the foreseeable future. And after that, who knows? Got a few more dates planned up for the rest of the year where I might pop up. You never know, but you're not going to miss me. That's for damn sure. Love it, man. It's like you've done this before, bro. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for the time, man. Continue success moving forward. Appreciate it. Hope to cross paths soon, man. Absolutely, brother. Thank you so much. Anytime. And guys, like we always say here on the BCP, everyone stay safe, stay positive, take care of each other. We out. Peace. Book Ben Bishop.